my two areas manas divas jomas kur es esam spēcīgs are empowering leadership ir pilna rojoša vadība and need or an evangelism un uz vajadzībām balstīt evangelizāciju you ask me to pastor any church jūs man liktu jebkuru draudzi vadīt and the scores in those two categories will go up un tajās draudzēs šie te rādītāji uzreiz uzlabotos but i need other people's help with the other categories bet man vai citu cilvēku palīdzību pārējās kategorijās so i believe in the church that was pastoring we went up uh, 16 or 17 points in empowering leadership un draudzēs kur es biju mēs vienā bija 16 17 punktus pieaugums bija šajā pilnarojošo vadību between the first two surveys start abām okay so let's Let's go ahead and have a prayer as we begin. Pieloksim kopīni. Dear Lord, we pray that as we look at what it means to be empowering. Dārgais kungs, mēs gribam lūkt tevi, skatoties, ko nozīmē būt pilnvarots. to grow in this area. Ka tu mums palīdzēs augt šajā jomā. In your name, amen. Tavā vārdā mēs to lūdzam. Āmen. This is actually one of my favorite topics to talk with pastors about. Īstenībā tas ir viens no maniem mīļākajiem tematiem, par ko runāt ar mācītājiem. And you'll see why in a moment. Un jūs drīz redzēsiet, kāpēc. John Maxwell says this. Johns Maxwells saka tā. I believe the bottom line in leadership. Es ticu, ka pamats vadībai isn't how far we advance ourselves. No, cik tālu mēs paši pieaugam. But how far we advance others. Bet cik tālu mēs palīdzam citiem to darīt. What hinders lay involvement? in local church ministry. Kas kavē ierinis locekļu iesaistīšanos vietējās draudzes kalpošanā? What keeps lay people from getting involved? Kas atur drau ierinis locekļus iesaistīties? Share with me some ideas. Pastāstiet man, dodiet kādas idejas. Okay, you know what? I want to You translate to me what they say in English and I'm going to actually type it down here, okay? Mhm. Mm so, all right, here we Tātad, go. Tātad es pierakstīšu un es un Dalmans tulkos. Okay. And uh, notice how easy it was for us to come up with all these reasons. Uh, Ivaro tik viegli mums bija nosaukt šos visus iemesļus. That should say something to us, shouldn't it? Tam kaut par kaut ko vajadzētu liecināt, vai ne? As to why lay people aren't more involved. Kāpēc cilvēki neiesaistās? I did the same activity in England. Es šo pašu aktivitāti Anglijā. And this is the list they they came up with. Un viņi ar šādu sarakstu uh, nāc klajā unclear sense of vision within the church neskaidr vīzija par draudzes neskaidr draudzes vīzija lack of confidence in one's abilities trūkst pārliecības par sevi ministry performed mainly by pastor kalpošana kas galvenokārt ir mācītāja veikta failure a fear of failure or rejection vails no uh, atraidījuma vai kļūdas. How about this one a consumer mindset the pastor and the bible worker get paid to do the job. Kā ar šo patērētāju domāšanu uh, ka apmaksātam mācītājam ir jādarbojas. Perhaps they're struggling labā. with some bad habits in their lives. Varbūt viņiem ir slikti ieradumi savās dzīvēs. Uh, gender exclusion they said in England. Uh, Anglijā viņi vēl teica dzimumu uh, nevienlīdzība. And then not ministering according to gifts. Uh, dzimumu diskriminācija varētu teikt. So there are many things that hinder lay people from being more active in ministry. Oh, un vēl uh, nav kalpošana atbilstoši dāvinām. Tad ir vairākas lietas, kas atur. Uh, so I want to look at a definition no kalpošanas. I want to look at a definition of what it means to empower. Es jo pazīties uz definīciju, ko nozīmē pilnvarot, un latviski tas Jā, nu pilnvarot, mēs lietot. some people starp, think it's ir. simply asking somebody to do something. That that's empowering. Daži domā, ka pilnvarots nozīmē vienkārši kādam kaut ko pajautāt, lai viņš izdara. But it's much more than that. Bet tas ir daudz vairāk kā tas. Empowering means that you need to believe in somebody. Pilnvarot nozīmē, ka tu kādam tici. Some of you that want to plan a church. Piemēram, kā, kādam, kurš grib veidot draudzi. It would mean everything to you tas tev nozīmēs visu to know that your pastor believe that you could do that zināt ka tavs mācītājs tev tic ka tu to var izdarīt to know that your conference president believe you could do that zināt ka tavs savienības konferences prezidents tic ka tu to var izdarīt to know that your union president believe you could do it zināt ka tavs unijas prezidents tic ka tu to var izdarīt is the beginning of what it means to empower 
tas ir, ja tev ir kāds, kurš tic tev, ka tu vari kaut ko izdarīt, tas ir šīs te pilnvarošanas sākums. When a person points out all the problems as to why you wouldn't be able to do that job, kad cilvēks uzrāda problēmas, visas, kas tev ir, kāpēc tu nevarāt kaut ko darīt, that is the opposite of empowering. Tas ir pretēji pilnvarojošajai. But there's a second part to empowering. Bet ir šai pilnvarošanai otra puse. There needs to be an opportunity. Ir jābūt arī iespējai. A task, a job to be done. Uzdevumam, darbiņam, kas ir jāizdara. So you believe in somebody and they have an opportunity to serve. Tātad tu tici kādam un ir arī iespēja kaut ko darīt. I have a team with me here. Man šeit līdz ir komanda. If I was doing all the presentations, ja es runātu visas prezentācijas, that would not be very empowering. Tas nebūtu ļoti pilnvarojošs. But I'm trusting my team, bet es uzticos savai komandai, to talk with the conference administrators without me being there. Lai viņi runā ar konferences vadītājiem bez manis, bez manas klātbūtnes. Now I met with them last night, es ar viņiem satikos vakardien vakarā, but I'm giving them opportunity to share their expertise. Bet es dodu viņiem iespēju līdzdalīt viņu ekspertīzi. Reid is back here talking about house churches. Reids šeit runāja par mājasdraudzēm. I have to give him opportunity to do that. Man viņam ir jārada iespēja to darīt. I have a presentation on house churches as well. Man arī ir par mājasdraudzēm prezentācija. But he is planting house churches. Bet viņš veidot šīs te draudzes. So I believed in Reid. Es tātad uzticējos, ticēju Reidam. Reid was given an opportunity But the, but the last step is the one that is most often skipped. Un vēl ir pēdējais solis, kas ir visbiežāk tiek izlaists. To empower means that there is ongoing support. Pilnvarot nozīmē, ka ir pastāvīgs atbalsts. You're empowering them to succeed in what they're doing. Tu viņus pilnvaro, lai viņi būtu veiksmīgi tajā, ko viņi darīs. If you simply say, read, I believe you can plant house churches. Ja tu vienkārši saki, Rīd, es uzticos, ka tu vari veidot mājas draudzes. Here's a place that you can do it. Te ir vieta, kur tu to vari darīt. Good luck! Lai tev veicis. That's what we do so many times in the church. Tas ir tas, ko mēs darām tik ļoti bieži draudzē. And by support, I'm not talking about micromanaging them. Un ar atbalstu es nedomāju, tā kā mikro viņus kontrolēt. Telling them everything they need to do. Teikt viņiem visu, kas viņiem ir jādur pa solītu. You're there to encourage them. Tu esi tur, lai iedrošinātu. To celebrate with them. Lai svinētu ar viņu. To listen to them. Klausītos uz viņu. To pray. Lūgtu ar viņu. All those things are empowering. Visas šīs lietas ir pilnvarojošas. When was the first time you remember somebody empowering you? Kā tu atceries, kad ir pirmā reize, kad kāds pilnvaroja tevi? And how did that feel? Un kāda bija sajūta? I'd like you to turn to one other person and share your story that way. The first time somebody really empowered you. They really believed in you. They gave you opportunity and they supported you. How did that feel? Okay, let's come back together. Labi, atkal pievērsīsimies. The job description of a pastor, according to the Bible, darba apraksts saskaņā ar Bībeli, mācītājiem, is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Ir sagatavot svētos kalpošanai. The pastor's main job, mācītāja galvenais uzdevums, is to help lay people succeed in the ministry that they're in. Ir palīdzēt draudzes locekļiem būt veiksmīgiem kalpošanām. Let's see what I did here. Is it free? Ah, okay. Um, but here's what happens with pastors. But look, it's not like a time. And this is maybe a reason why some of them don't empower as much as they should. A lot of pa a lot of pastors I found out. Es atklāju ka daudz mācītāji. Especially through teaching at the seminary, at Andrews University. Ipaš tie, kas ir gājuši Andrews tam semināram. I found out that a lot of pastors went into ministry because they like doing ministry. Ka daudz mācītāji mācās par mācītājiem, tāpēc, ka viņiem patīk kalpošana. They find ministry enjoyable. 
viņi to izbauda, viņiem so, pašiem patīk kalpot. Maybe I should be a pastor. Varbūt man vajadzētu būt mācītājam. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Nav nekas nepareizs tajā. It just simply is not the job description of a pastor. Tas vienkārši nav darba apraksts, kas ir mācītājam. But they get to a church Un tad viņi aiziet uz draudzi. And they have a hard time making the transition. Un viņiem grūti šo pārēju veikt. Because they've been trained and when they do ministry it's done well. Jo kad viņi tiek apmācīti un viņi dara kalpošanu, viņiem labi padodas. And they enjoy it. Un viņiem tas patīk. But that's not their job. Bet tas nav viņu darbs. They live by the motto if you want it done right, do it yourself. Viņi dzīvo pēc modeļa, ja tu gribi darīt pareizi, dari pats. Are most pastors better preachers than lay people? Mūsu lielākā daļa mācītāji ir labāk sludinātāji nekā ierinas locekļi. Well, they should be. Tā ir kā vajadzētu būt. Because they've received training and they've had some practice. Jo viņi saņem apmācību un viņiem ir arī pieredze praktiskā. It's not true in every case. Nav gan paties katrā gadījumā. I know some amazing lay preachers. Es zinu dažus apbrīnojumus ierīnas locekļus sludinātājus. Bet realitāte ir tāda, ka pastors need to also have lay people trained to preach. Bet, ka mācītājiem ir nepieciešams apmācīt ierīnas locekļus sludinātājus. And the training a pastor receives is for the purpose of helping others with what God is calling them to do. Jo mācītāji mērķis ir palīdzēt citiem to iemācīties. And it's okay if sometimes someone makes a mistake. Un tas nekas, ja kādreiz kāds pieļauj kļūdu. I remember a young man that I was very um, impressed with his preaching. Es atceros, ka bija kāds jauns cilvēks, kur man atstāja ļoti labi iespēju viņu sludināšanu. Uh, we, you know, and, and we had a youth church once a month in the fellowship hall. Mūsu sadraudzības telpā bija jauniešu draudze vienreiz mēnesī, kur jaunieši plānoja visu diekalpojumu. Tas nebija galvenajā zālē. Līdz ar to viņi ļoti daudz varēja praktizēties, sludināt uz saviem vienaudziem. Un šis puisis, kad viņš pirmo reizi sāk sludināt, viņš sāk no pirmās mūsu zāmas, un tās gāmtējums, un stundas sludināja. Bet viņi ir svētri un uzlabojas, un viņš ir garīgs jaunietis. Līders. So I invited him to preach for the adults. Pieaugušajiem. And he decided to preach on sex. Un viņš izlēma sludināt par seksu. Not a good plan. No, nebija labs plāns. Hopefully he has no experience in this area. Cerams, ka viņam nav pieredze šajā jautājumā. But young people make mistakes sometimes. Bet jaunieši pieļauj kļūdas dažreiz. But I believed in this young man. Bet es ticēju viņam. I gave him opportunities. Es viņam devu iespējas. And today he's a leader in God's church. Un šodien viņš ir līderis Dievu draudzē. So it's okay if mistakes are made sometimes. Tas nekas, ja dažreiz tiek pieļauts kļūds. It's better to give somebody an opportunity and a mistake happen. Labāk ir kādam dot iespēju un pieļaut kļūdu. Then not to give the opportunity at all. Nekā nepie, ne, ne dot iespēju. Many pastors are busy putting out fire fight, uh, fires rather than recruiting firefighters. Daudzi mācītāji ir aizņemti dzēšot ugunsgrēku, nevis apmācot ugundzēsējus, sagatavojot ugundzēsējus. Viņi mēģina tik galā ar visām draudzes problēmām. Mūsu konferenciču vadītāji arī var būt sastopt šo problēmu. Viņi mēģina tik galā ar visām konferences problēmām. Un maz laika paliek, lai nestu tālāk vīziju un darītu jaunas un aizraujošas lietas. But a pastor needs to be recruiting more firefighters. Bet mācītājiem ir jānolīgst vairāk ugunzēsējus. They shouldn't be the only one dealing with the problems. Viņiem nevajadzētu būt vienīgajiem, kas tiek galā ar problēmām. And then finally, un visbeidzot, some pastors don't see any potential leaders among their members. Daži mācītāji neredz nevienu potenciālu līderu starp saviem draudzes locekļiem. This is truly a sad thing to me. Tā ir ļoti patiesa bēdīga lieta. And I've heard a number of pastors express this sentiment to me. Un daudz mācītāji man to ir izteikuši. Who are we to say who has potential and who doesn't? Kas mēs esam, lai pateiktu, kuram ir potenciāls un kuram nav? Dievs var lietot jebkuru, ko viņš izrāvs. 
Es esmu stāstījis par stāstu par vīru Fei Molins. The Fei Molins story I shared with the Russians on Sabbath morning. Ar krievu draudzes līdzdalīšo stāstu. Some of you may have heard me share this before. Varbūt jūs kāds vēl dzirdējis, ka es esmu to stāstījis. This is a lady who is the top soul winner in the Alberta conference in Canada. Tā ir tā ir dāma, kas ir Alberta konferences. Alberta. Kura ir vislielākā dvēsļa mantotāja Alberta konferences. She's not a pastor. Viņa nav mācītāja. She's a lay person. Viņa ir ierinas locekla. And she has a stuttering problem. Un viņa ir ir stotīšanās problēma. So imagine. Yeah? Okay, good. Brother, do you like this story? So you imagine her coming out of church. Iedomājieties, ka viņa nāk un sāk pastor. Un sāk mācītāji. Nice sermon. Ļoti jauka svētruna. What person is going to say this lady will be the top soul winner in our church? Kurš no kurš cilvēks teiks, ka šī būs lielākā dvēseļa mantotāja draudzē? Not only that, she is going to be the top soul winner in the whole conference. Ne tikai draudzē, bet visā konferencē. This lady has seen over 250 people baptized as Seventh-day Adventists. Šī sieviete ir vedusi 250 cilvēkus kristīties. And I think most pastors would stand back and say, well, she's a sweet lady. Un es domāju, ka lielākā daļa mācītē teikt, God bless you, sister. Viņa jauk dāma, Dievs tev svētīja māc. But she's won more people to Jesus than most pastors will in a lifetime. Bet viņa ir mantojusi vairāk cilvēks nekā mācītājs savā dzīvē. So I think we need to be careful with this idea of es domāju, mums vajadzētu būt uzmanīgiem ar šo ideju. Trying to guess who has potential and who doesn't. Mēģinot uzmanēt, kuram ir un kuram nav potenciāls. So as a result of pastors not empowering people, Un tā rezultātā, ka mācītāji nepilnvaro cilvēkus. The result of conference leaders not empowering people. Savienības konferenču vadītāju rezultātā, ka viņi nepilnvaro cilvēkus. They become burned out. Viņi izdeg. They can be lonely. Viņi jūs vientuļi. They can be filled with guilt because they can't get everything done. Pildīt ar vainu, jo nevar daudz lietas izdarīt. They can be busy to the extreme. Varbūt aizņemt līdz galējībai. They can be stressed out. Stresā. They can be ready to move or change career even. Vai pat vēlēties projām no darba vai mainīt karjeru. And because they're doing so much, if anybody questions what they're doing, they can get easily offended. Un tāpēc, ka viņi dara tik daudz, un ja kāds apšaub viņu darbu, viņi ļoti ātri apvainojas. Ellen White says, sometimes ministers do too much. Ellen White saka, dažreiz kalpotāji dara par daudz. They seek to embrace the whole work in their arms. Viņi vēlas apņemt darbu ar savām rokām. It absorbs and dwarfs them. Tas absorbē un ierauj viņus. Ja tie continue to grasp it at all. Tomēr viņi joprojām cenšas to sagrābt. They seem to think that they alone are to work in the cause of God. Viņi tiecas domāt, ka viņi ir vienīgie dieva darbā. While the members of the church stand idle. Kamēr dieva draudzes locekļi stāv dīkā. This is not God's plan at all. Tas nav dieva plāns. Exodus. Chapter 18 gives us some hope for burned out pastors. Otrā mūsu 18. nodaļa dod mums cerību izdegušiem mācītājiem. And I think my, there we go. Um, Jethro comes to visit with Moses. Jethros nāk satikties ar mūsu. He is Moses' father-in-law. Viņš ir mūsu sievstāvs. And he has some good advice. Viņam ir kāds labs padoms. And I highlighted some of the key words here. Un es dažus atslēgas vārdus esmu izcēlis. The thing you do is not good. Lieta, ko tu dari, nav laba. You will wear yourselves out. Tu nogursi. Now, notice this is in the plural. Ievērojiet, ka tas ir daudz skaidrīgi. If Moses kept doing this, he would wear himself out. Ja Moses to darītu, viņš nogurtu. But he was also going to wear the people out. Bet viņš arī nogurdinās cilvēkus. He says, select able men. Izvēlies spējīgus vīrus. Teach them. Māci viņus. Let them judge. Lai viņi spriež tiesu. If you do this, you will endure. Ja tu to darīsi, tu izturēsi. Now this is great advice coming from Moses' father-in-law. Tas ir brīnišķīgs padoms, kas nāk no sievstāva. Here's my question. 
Why did Jethro know this is what needed to be done and not Moses? Jautājums, kāpēc Jetrus zināja, ka tā ir jādara, nevis Moses? How did Jethro have such a clear picture of what Moses needed to do and Moses didn't? Kā Jetrus Jetrusam bija tik skaidra tā bilde, bet Mozam nebī. Go and discuss that with two or three other people. Why did Jethro have this great advice? Apsprīdiet atkal ar Blaks sēdētājiem. And not Moses. Kāpēc Mozam pašam tas neienāc prātā? Kāpēc Jetrus to... Okay, let's come back together. Labi, sanāksim atkal so kopā. Theologians. Sanāciet, sanāciet visu. What did you come up with? No teologi. Ko jūs esat izskriešu? Really well too, doesn't it? Wow. Why did Jethro know and not Moses? Kāpēc Jetro zināja, bet Mozes nē? Okay, let's hear what you came up with. Nu, ko ar kādiem secinājumiem jūs nācāt klejā? Life's experience. Okay, what in particular? What particular? What, what particular? Kā da tieši? He had experience in leadership. He was a, a, a priest. Okay. So he might have. And he had daughters too, didn't he? Un viņam bija arī meitas, vai ne? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's always helpful. Yeah. You had that. Kāja neānung. No, it was the thing in the sun. Oh, thank you, Bertolt. Okay. The lady said that uh, it is good to, to see from ah. Oh, the outside perspective. Mm -hmm. Tātad no malas. Skats no malas. Yeah, very good. That's what a about, great point. What about yes. you? Yes. Okay. No, the most be para ku ierauts lai pats varat pasīt. So we have a way to refer to that. You can't see the forest for the trees, right? Tad viņš bija aizņemts parāk ar kokiem lai redzētu mežu, ja? Yep. Kāds vēl ir domas tur? Moses was very good accepting the advice, wasn't he? Jā, tātad šeit atkal mazliet pa citu tēmu, bet ka Mozes bija pazemīgs pieņemot šo padomu, jā, viņš neatgrūda. Any others? I think one of the keys is that Mozes was trained in the ways of the Egyptians. Man liekas, ka viena no lietām ir tās, ka Mozes bija mācīts ēģiptiešu, viņam bija ēģiptiešu izglītība. In which Pharaoh's word was the final word. Kur Fārona vārds bija galējais vārds. It was an authoritarian type of society. Tā bija autoritāra tipa saviedrība. And so Mozes was the leader that everybody wanted to look to. Un līdz ar to Mozes bija līderis, uz kuru visi gribēja skatīties. Because they were oppressed by the Egyptians. Jo viņi bija apspiesti ēģiptē. But I also think that Jethro was a little bit worried about his daughter. Bet es domāju, ka Jetrus arī bija mazliet norūpējis par savu meitu. And he, she, he was worried that there would be no time for her based on Moses' schedule the way it was. Un ka viņš bija norūpējis, ka norūpējis par savu meitu, ka Mozam nebūs laika ar viņu paldīt. And I don't think he was ready to leave his daughter behind without fixing the problem first. Un es domāju, ka viņš negribēja atstāt savu meitu novārtā nemēģinot salabot šo problēmu. So here's another question. Vēl viens jautājums. Did Moses learn his lesson? Vai Mozes iemācījās šo šo te par How many say yes, Moses learned his lesson. Kurš teikt, jā, Mozes mācījās no savas. How many say no, he didn't learn his lesson. Tik daudz teikt, nē. Okay, we have biblical evidence. Here we go. Tam mums ir bibliskais piedāvājums. Moses is having the same trouble again. In Numbers chapter 11. Ceturtā Mozes viemstā nodaļā atkal Mozam ir problēmas ar šo lietu. This time God tells him directly what he needs to do. Šoreiz Dievs viņam saka pa tiešo. Moses, I'm not able to bear all these people alone. Mozes saka, es neesmu spējīgs panest šos cilvēkus viens pats. The burden is too heavy for me. Šī nasta ir pārāk smaga man. Now I thought Jethro helped him sort all that out. Es domāju, ka Jethros taču palīdzēja viņam to izsanāt. But he's back to the same problem. Un līdz ar to viņš atkal atgriež pie savas problēmas. God said, gather 70 men of the elders. Dievs saka, sapulcim 70 vecējus. I will take of the spirit that's on them and put on you and put the same spirit on them. Es paņemšu no gara, kas ir tev, un likšu viņos to pašu garu. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. Un viņi nesīs šo cilvēku nastu ar tevi. 
This is what I'd like to share with you about empowering leadership. To es gribētu līdzlīt jums par pilnarojošu vadību. The good news. Labās ziņas. Is this is a skill that can be learned. Ir ka tā ir prasme, kur var iemācīties. All of us can improve in this area of our lives. Mēs visi varam uzlabot šo te jomu savās dzīvēs. Even if we struggle with it like Moses. Pat ja mums ir problēmas ar to tāpat kā Mozum. It will get us to the place where we feel overwhelmed. Tas mums novadīs, pat ja tas novad mums pie vietas, kur mēs jūtamies pārņemt. But if we're open to learning. Bet ja mēs esam atvērti mācīšanai. If we're open to doing things differently than we've done before. Atvērti darīt lietas citādāk, kā mēs esam darījuši. We can improve in this area. Mēs varam pilnveidoties šajā jomā. Pointing to a map of China. Tā, pointing to a map of China. Čīnas karte. Napoleon said, "There lies a sleeping giant." Napoleon said, "Kaut kur tur guļ dusošs milzis." Let him sleep. Lai viņš guļ. For when he wakes, he will move the world. Jo kad tas pamodīsies, tas izkustinās pasauli. The world we live in today, China, has awakened. Pasauli, kurā mēs šodien dzīvojam, šis milzis ir pamodies Ķīna. But there is a sleeping giant in the church. But arī draudzē ir dusošs milzis. Here's a poll that uh, a survey that happened in North America. Šeit ir aptauja, kas uh, tika veikt Amerikā. They found out that 10% of church members are active in some kind of ministry. Viņi atklāja uh, parādī, ka 10% draudzes locekļi ir aktīvi kādā kalpošanā. 50% of church members have no interest in any kind of ministry at all. But this next group is the one I'm concerned about. But šī nākošā grupa ir tā, par kuru es vairāk uztraucos. 40% of church members have expressed an interest in ministry, in having a ministry. 40% draudzes locekļi ir izteikuši interesi tik tiesaistītiem kalpošanā, bet nekad neviens ne viņiem nav jautājis. But nobody has ever ask them nobody's ever asked neviens nekad nav jautājis nobody's believing in them neviens nav ticējis viņiem nobody's giving them opportunity nav devs iespēju so obviously there's no support that comes along right atcim redzot nav nekāds no proms arī trešais solis atbalsts so we can look at why pastors sometimes fail to empower mēs varam pastāties kāpēc dažreiz mācītājiem neizdodas pilnvarot and when i uh, was teaching a class on mobilizing the laity for the seminary tad kad es uh, Andrews universitātē oh, mācīju uh, pasniedzu i le... called a band on the uh, phone stund par uh, mob uh, ierinis mobilizēšanu i called a man on the phone who had developed a survey Es piezvanīju cilvēkam, kurš bija izveidojis aptauju. His expertise is helping people identify innate talents. Viņa ekspertīze ir identificēt cilvēku tavu innate. Innate, innate. It's something that comes naturally to you. You're born with it. Tātad, ā, jā, jā, jā. Tātad spējīgs identificēt cilvēku iekšējos talants. And you're born with it, okay? Ar to, kur tu esi piedzimis. So he's identified 54 talents that people are born with. Tātad viņš ir identificējis 54 talentus, kas vispār cilvēkiem. So I told him on the phone that I train pastors. Es viņam pateicu par telefonu, ka es apmācu mācītājus. And I would like to know what questions on his survey. Un es gribētu zināt, kuri jautājumi aptaujā would be qualities that would help a pastor empower other people. Būs būtu īpašības, kuras varētu mācītājiem palīdzēt pilnvarot. And what qualities would hinder a pastor from empowering others? Kādas īpašības viņā atur no pilnvarošanas? He never been asked such a question before. Viņam neviens kad nekad nebī uzdevis tādu jautājumu. But he immediately gave his responses. Bet viņš uzreiz deva atbildes. When I shared this with my class, they didn't like it at all. Kad es līdzdalī to ar savu klasi, viņiem studentiem man viņiem nepatīk. I actually had them take the survey. Man es īstenībā piedabūju viņus izpildīt šo aptauju. And almost all the pastors in my class, 30 students or so. Un gandrīz visi topošie mācītāji, 30 studenti, found out that they were not naturally empowering. Ka viņi dabiski nav pilnvarojoši. They didn't like that very much. Viņiem tas ļoti nepatika. 
So I had to stop giving the survey. Un līdz ar to es beidzu dot šo sapnojumu. And I simply share with them the research. Un es viņiem vienkārši līdzdalī pētījumus. And hope that they will catch it from there. Un cerēju, ka viņi So here it is. Kaut kas viņiem aizsters no tā. Here are the desirable traits of somebody who's empowering. Tātad šeit ir tās vēlamās iezīmes tam, kurš ir pilnvarojošs. Promoting. Tātad promoting something. Uh, tāds, kurš um, vei, nu, sekmē, jā, veicina kaut ko. Uh, selling or recruiting. Uh, pārdošanas vai uh, nolīkšanas darbā. Nu, teikt, profesionāla valoda lietojot. Or problem solving. Uh, vai uh, risinājuma meklēšana. Now, the reason problem solving is on this list is because often a problem requires multiple people in order to solve it. Iemes, kāpēc tas ir tā, tāpēc, ka lai kādu problēmu atrisināt, parasti vajag vairāk cilvēks iesaistīt. But here's the surprising list. Bet re, kur ir pārsteidzošais saraksts. Those things that get in the way tās lietas, kas stājas ceļā pilnvarojošai vadībai. Being of service. Uh, mm, Serving. Jā. Kalpo, kalpošam, esot kalpotājam. Now, this sounds like a wonderful thing, somebody who wants to serve others. The question isn't whether this is a good quality or not. The question is whether it helps someone to be empowering. Counseling. Reassuring and supporting others. Uh, iedrošināt un, un uh, atzīt citus. Now I can tell you if you took a list like this to a church. Es jums varu pateikt, ja jūs paņemt šo sarakstu uz draudzi. And you said we have a new pastor coming. Un jums vienkārši būtu jauns mācītājs, kas nāk. They love to serve. Viņam uh, patiktu kalpot. They're good at counseling. Viņš ir labs padomdošanā. And they reassure and support others. Un viņš iedrošina un uh, atbalsta citus. The members would say, bring this pastor to us. We love to have a pastor like this. But the problem is all of these qualities creates a dependency upon the pastor. Because all members should be of service. We're all called to serve, not just the pastor. Kalpošanā. If the pastors counseling people, they become dependent on the pastor for that counseling ja and help. Ja uh, uh, citiem, tad viņi kļūst atkarīgi no And we're to mutually support one another in the church, Mūs not to simply look to the pastor to provide that for us. Uh, viena otru draudzē, nevis vienkārši skatīties uz mācītāju, lai saņemt šo atbalstu. I like this quote right here. Un patīk šis uh, citāts šeit. Instead of finding their fulfillment in their own doing of ministry. Tā vietā, lai atrastu uh, savu piepildījumu pašā, savā paša kalpošanā. The satisfaction must come in assisting others to blossom to their ministry potential. Apmierinājumam jānāk no tā, uh, no, no tā ka palīdz citiem uh, īstenot savu kalpošanas potenciālu. And this is my favorite quote on empowering leadership right here. Un šis ir mans mīļākais citāts no pilnvarojošas vadības. The ministry is for all who are called to share in Christ's life. Kalpošana ir priekš visiem, kur ir aicināt līdzdalīt Kristus dzīvi. Scripture teaches us, teaches that we are all ministers. Raksta māc, ka mēs visi esam kalpotāji. The pastorate, and what he means here is those that are paid pastors. Pastorate. Mācītāji, viņš domā šeit apmaksātas mācītājs. Is for those who have the special gift ir tie, kuriem ir īpaša dāvana of helping other men and women palīdzēt citiem vīriem un sievietēm practice the ministry that God has called them to do. Praktizēt kalpošanu, ko Dievs ir viņiem uzticējis. That is a great job description of a pastor right there. Šeit ir brīnišķīgs darba apraksts mācītājiem. Helping others succeed at what God has called them to do. Palīdzēt citiem uh, būt veiksmīgiem tajā, ko Dievs viņi, tajā, kur Dievs viņas ir aicinājis. So what's the most important role of a pastor? Kas ir vissvarīgākā uh, loma mācītājiem? Is it a preacher? Vai tā ir sludināšana? A soul winner? Dvēseļu mantošana? Or a trainer equipper? Vai uh, apmācītāja... Uh, 
I'm not going to just share my opinion, I'm going to back it up. Es okay? nelizlēšu vienkārši savu viedokli, es to arī pamatošu. And because I included this, I think you know which my preference is, right? Un, protams, es zinu, ko jūs domājat. But let's look at the quotes. Ko es domāju, kas ir pareizi atbildi. Let the ministers devote more of his time to educating than to preaching. Lai kalpotāji ziedo vairāk laika mācīšanai, izglītošanai, nekā sludināšanai. Let him teach the people how to give to others the knowledge they have received. Lai viņi māc cilvēkiem, kā dot citiem zināšanas, ko viņi paši saņēmuši. So training and educating is more important than preaching. Apmācība un izglītošana ir daudz svarīgāk nekā sludināšana. The minister should develop the talent in the church. Kalpotājiem vajadzētu attīstīt talantu draudzē. It is not preaching alone that must be done. Tā nav tikai sludināšana, kas ir jāveic. Far less preaching is needed. Daudz mazāk sludināšanas ir vajadzīgs. More time should be devoted to patiently education of others. Vairāk laika nepieciešams veltīt, lai pacietīgi izglītos cikus. So again, the educating, the equipping is more important. Izglītošana, apmācīšana, pilnvarošana ir daudz svarīgāka. What about evangelism? Kā ir ar evangelizāciju? In laboring where there are already some in the faith, es darbojoties pie tiem, kuriem jau ir kāda ticība, the minister should at first seek not so much to convert unbelievers, kalpotājumu vajadzētu no sākuma meklēt nevis tik daudz, lai atgrieztu neticīgos, as to train church members for acceptable cooperation. Kā apmācīt draudzes locekļus pieņemamai sadarbībai. And here's somebody pretty close to Ellen White. Un šeit arī vēl kāds citāds blaks Ellen White. You all know Mark Finley. Jūs visi zināt Mark Finley. Any pastor. Jebkurš mācītājs. Who does not place priority in equipping members? Kuram prioritāt nav pilnvarot apmācīt draudzes locekļus. To both both discover and use their spiritual gifts. Atklāt un izmantot savus garīgās dāvanas. In service. Kalpošanā. Is not fulfilling their biblical role as a pastor. Nepiepildu savu bīblisko lomu kā mācītājs. Mark Finley gets it. He understands it, doesn't he? Mark Finley Finley to saprot. The obvious, this is one of my students that wrote a, uh, a reflection paper in one of my classes. Šeit ir viens no maniem studentiem, kas vien no saviem citās no viens no viņa darbiem. He was looking at statistics of church growth uh, around the world field in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Viņš skatījās uz statistiku adventistu draudzēs pa visu pasauli draudzes izaugsmas rādītājos. Places where the church is growing and places where the church is declining. Vietās, kur draudze aug un vietās, kur draudze sarūk. The obvious conclusion from these statistics. Atsim redzam secinājums no šīm 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 statistikas šīs statistikas. Is that when the ministry and evangelism are professionalized. Kad kalpošana un evangelizācija ir tiek profesionalizēta, jeb to vada profesionāli. So we have our professional clergy, right? Tad mums ir tie profesionālie kalpotāji. The members depend on the minister to gain converts. Draudz locekļi paliek atkarīgi no tiem kalpotājiem jaunatgriezto skaita palielināšanā. Addition is the best one can expect. Pielikums ir labākais, ko var gaidīt. It is not until the members become active. Kamēr draudz locekļi nekļūst aktīvi. Both in outreach and church planting. Gan evangelizācijas aktivitātēs, gan draudžu veidošanā. The multiplication becomes possible. Šī te pavairošanās var tikt būt var būt iespējami. Whenever my students write articles, I let them know that those are not copyrighted and I can use those quotes anytime I want. Es vienmēr saskaņoju saviem studentiem, kad es kaut ko līdzdalu no viņa darbiem. Do you recognize Donald Trump? Vai jūs atpazīstat Donaldu Trumpu? He is running for president of the United States right now. Viņš pašlaik kandidēja Amerikas prezidenta vēlēšanās. It will be another year before many things are decided. Vēl viens gads līdz viss tiks ievēlēts Amerikas prezidenta. But he is famous for a TV show called The Apprentice. Viņš ir slavens ar TV seriālu Apprentice. Where he likes to fire people kur viņam patīk atlaist cilvēks. He goes like this, you're fired. Un viņš dara tā, man, tu esi atlaists. He loves to fire people. Viņam patīk atlaist cilvēku. So here's the question. Tā ir jautājums. If Donald Trump was your conference president, would he fire you? 
vai dan, ja Donalds Trumps būtu tavs kon, uh, konferences prezidents, vai viņš tev atlaistu? Look at this quote. Pasties uz, pasties uz šo uh, citātu. Ellen White talks about a work crew out on the road. Uh, Ellen White runā par uh, kādiem darbiniekiem uz ceļa. And the, the boss comes along. Un boss pienāk pie šiem darbiniekiem. To check and see how the work is going. Redzēt, uh, pie ceļa strādniekiem. Uh, and he says to the guy he put in, kā, kā he, he says to the guy he put in charge. Viņš uh, pas, uh, skatās uz, uh, uz šo atbildīgo puisi. Uh, I employed you to keep six men at work. Es tevi nodarbināju, lai tu turētu, lai seši vīri darbotos. I found the six idle and you doing the work of but one. Es redzu, ka tie seši stāv dīkā un tu dari uh, vien uh, darbu viens pats. Your work could have been done just as well by any one of the six. Tavs darbs varēja tikt izdarīts uh, tikpat labi kā šo uh, kā viens no tiem sešiem. I, I cannot afford to pay the wages of seven. Es nevaru at, uh, atļauties maksāt septiņu algas. For you to teach the six how to be idle. Lai tu mācītu viņiem kā būt dīkā. This is American sport of football. Šis ir amerikāņu sporta veids, amerikāņu and I, and I love this quote I found. Un man patīk šis citāts, ko es atradu. Football is an event where 50,000 people who desperately need exercise. Futbols ir notikums, kur 50 tūkstoši cilvēki, kuriem izmisīgi vai nepieciešams fizisks they, they sit in the stands. They sit in the stands watching 22 men in the field who desperately need rest. Viņi skatās uh, 22 vīrus uz laukumu, kuriem izmisīgi nepieciešama atpūta. How does this reflect the reality in the churches? Kā tas atspoguļo draudzes realitāti? Friends, when I first came to the Baltic Union, draudz, uh, draugi, kad es pirmo reizi atbraucu uz Baltijas Uniju, I was so surprised es biju tik pārsteigts to hear pastors say they're worn out. Uh, dzirdēt mācītājs, ka uh, mēs esam uh, mācītāji noguruši. Pastoring one church vadot vienu draudzi with 30 to 50 people attending ar 30 līdz 50 cilvēkiem this is just unbelievable from the mindset i come from tas ir man ļoti grūti pieņemams neticams how, mans domāšanas how can you let 30 to 50 people wear you out kā tu vari atļaut 30 50 cilvēkiem ļaut tev nogurt nogurdināt tevi it's because the work is not planned properly. Tas ir tāpēc, ka darbs netiek plānots uh, pienācīgi. The members are not being empowered. Uh, draudzes locekļi netiek pilnvaroti. There's an 80-20 principle. Ir 80-20 uh, princips. Developed by um, Vilf, uh, Vilfredo Pareto. Uh, tas ir Pareto princips. Uh, and it's applied Pareto to the church. Un to var arī pielietot draudzē. It says that 80% of the people do about 20% of the work and 20% do 80% of the work. Tas nozīmē, ka 80% darbu darbs tiek izdarīts ar 20% cilvēku. Oh, let's see. There we go. I want to share with you about a young lady by the name of Raquel. Es gribu pasazīt par kādu jaunu dāmu, Raquel. She's Brazilian. Viņa ir brazīliete. She moved. Uh, she had been uh, a Christian in in Brazil. Viņa ir kristieta Brazīlijā. Her father was a church planter. Viņa stāvs bija draudz dibinātājs. He planted a church of 10,000 people. Viņš izveidoja draudz ar 10 tūkstoši cilvēkiem. A charismatic Catholic church. Charismatiski katoļu draudz. Raquel was the youth leader. Raquel bija jauniešu vadītāja. 4,000 youth in her youth group. She moved to the United States and wanted to learn English. So she didn't go to a Brazilian church. Of course, she's Catholic. But she met a friend in her apartment building who was a Seventh-day Adventist. Bet viņa satika draugu savā dzīvokļu mājā, kurš bija Adventists. She said, Raquel, come to church with me. Un viņi teica, Raquel, nāc ar manu uz draudzi. They'd made a friendship, and so Raquel agreed to go to church. Tā kā viņi bija izveidojuši draudzīgas attiecības, viņa atnāca līdz. But when she went to the church, she didn't really enjoy it. Bet, kad viņi aizgāja uz draudzi, viņi īsti nevarēja izbaudīt. 
there wasn't really any way that she could help in that church. And so she said, I like your friendship, but I really don't want to go to church with you. But the friendship continued. And one day, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist lady said, Raquel, there's a new church that's started. It's a church plant. Teica, Rakel, šeit ir jauna draudze, kas tiek dibināta. Will you go and visit this church with me? Vai tu nāks ar mani kopā apmeklēt to? And Rakel again agreed. Un Rakel atkal piekrit. As soon as she arrived, they put her to work. Un līdz ko viņa ieradās, viņa, viņa pielika darbam. Now understand, she's not a Seventh-day Adventist. Saprotiet, viņa nav adventista. She does love Jesus. Viņa mīl Jēzu. But she doesn't know the 28 fundamental beliefs. Bet viņa nezina 28 pamata pancības. But they said, Rakel, Would you sing in our choir? Teica, Rakel, vai tu mūsu, mūsu korī? Now is that okay for somebody who isn't quite there yet on everything to sing in the choir? I would vai, hope so. Vai, vai ir labi, vai ir normāli dziedāt kādam korī, kurš vēl visas lietas nezin, Rakel, can you help us set out the lunch and, and, and help, help us clean up afterwards? Rakel, vai tu palīdzēt mums ar pusdienām pas tam ar uh, schooling? To help clean up. Ah, yeah, un, un pas tam novākt arī. Raquel felt like she was needed. Uh, Raquel jūtās vajadzīga. And she wanted to help. Un viņa gribēja palīdzēt. So she went back the next week. Un tā viņa atgriezās na- iepri- nākamajā nedēļā. And the next week. Un tad nākamajā. And became very active in the church. Un kļuva ļoti aktīvi draudzē. So much so that her parents back in Brazil became concerned. Tik ļoti, ka vecāki Brazīlijā sāka uztraukties. They talked to Raquel's brother David. Un viņi runāja ar Raquel's brāli Dāvidu. They said, David, you need to take Raquel back to the Catholic Church. Dāvid, tev vajag atgriezt viņu atpakaļ uz katoļu so, baznīcu. So David flew to the United States. Dāvids aizlidoja uz Amerikas sēmētiem valstīm. And said, Raquel, we need to go back to the church of our parents. Un viņš teica, Raquel, mums jādar, jād, jādodas atpakaļ uz vecāku draudzi. We need to go back to the Catholic Church. Uz, uz katoļu baznīcu. So Raquel said, David, I'll make you a, a deal. Un Raquel teica, David, sarunāsim kaut ko. I'll go to the Catholic Church on, with you on Sunday. Es iešu ar tevi uz katoļu baznīcu uz svētdienā. If you go to the Adventist Church with me on Saturday. Ja tu atnāks ar mani uh, uz Adventistu draudzes uh, so David sēdienā. Said, okay. Dāvis teica, labi. The first Sabbath that David showed up at the church plant. Pirmajā sabatā, kad Dāvid parādījās šajā jaunajā draudzē. They said, David, we hear you play the guitar. Dāvid, mēs dzirdējām, ka tu spēlē ģitāru. Next week, you and your sister are going to be doing special music for us. Vai tu nevarētu nākamajā nedēļā ar savu māsu mums mūzikālu priekšņu? He said, here in this church? I'm not a member of this church. No, David, we want you to share your music with us. So, of course, David shared the music and he enjoyed and the people enjoyed. And after some time, the church had the 40 days of fasting and prayer. They've been having some evangelism meetings. Raquel and David didn't talk about religious things anymore because they always fought about those things. Raquel and David never talked about religious things because they fought about But it was David's day to pray, uh, fast and pray. But tā bija Dāvida kārta pienāk uz tajā dienā lūkt un gavēt. And they're riding home from the meetings at the church. Un viņi brauc atpakaļ no draudzes sanāksmēm. And Raquel said, David, I need to tell you something. Un Raquel saka, Dāvid, man kaut kas tev jāpasaka. I've made a decision that I need to be baptized. David was silent. He said, uh, finally he spoke. He said, Raquel, Raquel, you know what this means, don't you? No one in our family has ever broken with the tradition of our family. Raquel said, I know. Raquel saka, es zinu. But I have to follow what I what I know is right. Bet man jāsako tam, ka es saprotu, kas ir pareizs. We each need to make our own decisions. Mums katram vai pieņemt savus lēmumus. David was silent. Dāvids klusai. He finally spoke. He said, Raquel. Viņš beidzot atkal ierunājās, teica Raquel. I want to join you and be baptized as well. Es arī gribu to pievienoties un tik kristīts. So they both had a beautiful baptism. The pictures were up on the internet. Uh, ir internetā. 
And back home, Raquel's parents for the first time visited the website of the church that they were going to. Un tur Brazīlijā Raquel's vecāk pirmo reizi iegāja mājaslapā tajā. And here's the pictures of their children being baptized. Un tur viņi ieraug uzreiz, kas viņi bērni kristīti. They start to cry, they become very upset. Viņi sāk raudāt, viņi bija ļoti noskumuši. But time passes. Bet laiks gāja. Raquel gets married to uh, Greg. You see in the picture up there. Raquel, uh, uh, this is her brother David on the top right. This is the worship team from the church plant. But Raquel still had one brother back in Brazil. His name was Sammy. Sammy. Yeah, always add an S, right? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So, so Raquel, uh, Raquel got on the phone with her mom. Raquel piezvanī mamai. Said, "Mom, can you send Sam over to study here in the United States?" Mamma, vai tu vari atsūtīt Sam, lai viņš studē Amerikā? Her mom hesitated. Mamma, mazliet vilcinājās. She said, "Raquel." Viņa teica, "Raquel." I will send him on one condition. Es viņu sūtīšu ar vienu nosacījumu that you will not give Sam any Bible studies. She said, okay. Mom, Mama, I won't give Sam any Bible studies. But Sam went to the Adventist school. Bet Sams devās uz Adventistu skolu. With Bible study as one of the classes. Kur bīvās stundas ir viena no priekšmetiem. And he asked many questions. Un viņš uzdeva daudz jautājumus. And gave his teachers a hard time. Un vēl mācītiem sagādāja daudz galvas sāpes. Because he saw the impact on his parents of his siblings' decision. Jo viņš redzēja, kā viņam brāls un māsas ir atstājuši, kā iespēja tas ir atstājuši māsas un brāls. So finally Sam also goes to church for the first time. Un beidzot, Sams arī atnāk uz baznīt draudzi vienreiz. They met him at the door. Viņi sagaidīja viņu pie durvīm. They said, Sam, next week you're in charge of the sound system. Viņi teica, Sam, nākamajā nedēļā tu esi atbildīgs par skaņu sistēmu. We hear you're good at running electronics. Mēs esam dzirdējuši, ka tev labi padodas elektriskās ierītes. He said, me, I'm new here. Es esam jauns šeit. Oh, they said, your brother's here, he can help if you need anything. Tavs brāls ir šeit, viņš tev var palīdzēt. Next week you run the sound system. Nākamajā reizē tu vadi... So Sam started coming to church because they needed him to run the sound system. Tās Sams sāk nākt baznīt draudz, jo viņam vajadzēja vadīt to skaņu aparatūru. The pastor started to study with Sam. Mācīties sāk mācīties ar pasniegt bībēlas. Sam would always raise problems. Samam vienmēr bija problēmas. And the pastor would ask him, are you ready to make a decision, Sam? Un mācītājs jautāja, vai tu esi gatavs pieņemt lēmumu, Sam? And he'd always say, not yet, not yet. Un viņš vienmēr teikt, ne, vēl ne, vēl ne. But one day when the pastor asked, Sam said, okay, I'm ready to be baptized. That very day his mom calls. She said, Sam, you're not planning to be baptized, are you? He says he has no idea how she found out. She said, you can't be baptized. You're not 18 yet. You're not an adult to make this decision. He was 17. So Sam called the pastor and said, Pastor, I can't be baptized. But it was a very hard week for him. And that Friday evening, the church was having communion. And Sam felt the Holy Spirit touch his heart. And he got up and he went to the pastor. Said, tomorrow I'm going to be baptized. These three young people are a vibrant part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But they became connected with the Adventist Church. But they became connected with the Adventist Church. And made the Adventist Church their church home. Un padarīs to šo draudzi par savām mājām. Because they were empowered to serve. Jo viņiem, viņi tika pilnvaroti kalpot. They didn't have to sit down and wait. Viņiem nevajadzēja apsēsties un gaidīt. For a whole year. Or two years until they had everything figured out in their lives. And they lost all their passion. The church had something for them to do right away. 
So how effective was this church at mobilizing new members? Tātad, cik efektīvi šī draudze bija uh, mobilizējot savus jaunos draudzes locekļus? Right away they had job for them, right? Tūlīt pat uzreiz. What impact did this have on the newcomers? Kādu iespēju tas atstāja uz jauniem nācējiem? They felt they were needed. That there was a place for them to tas, serve. Ka viņi ir vajadzīgi. That they could make a difference. Ka viņi var... Um, Radīt atšķirību, radīt pārmaiņas. Is it safe to involve new people right away? Vai tas ir droši iesaistīt uzreiz jaunus These cilvēkus? are the questions we face, but what is the uh, potential uh, problem of not involving them right away? Bet kāda ir potenciālā problēma neiesaistot? We may never win them if we don't figure out a way to involve them. Mēs varam arī nemantot, ja mēs neizdomājam, ko mēs viņiem varam... And then what are some jobs that are ready to go for new people to participate in? Un mēs beidzot, kādi ir tie daži darbiņi? pienākumu, ko mēs varam jauniem uzticēt. We don't have time to read this whole quote. Mums nav laika lasīt visu citātu. But I think this person kind of expresses what some people feel in the church sometimes. Bet, man liekas, šī, šis te cilvēks uh, uh, pauž to, kā dažreiz jūtas People who are draudē. always worried that some new person is going to create some problem in the church. Daži cilvēki ir vienmēr uh, satraukušies par to, ka kādi citi radīs problēmas. You know, looking for the, the wolves among the sheep. Ir tādi, kuri skatās, kur ir tie vilki starp aitām. Are there such people? Yes. Vai ir šeit tādi, vai ir tādi cilvēki? Ir. But usually they're Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> Bet parasti viņi ir Septietdienas Adventisti. That have some crazy theology that they believe in. Kuriem ir kāda īpatnēja traka teoloģija, kurā viņi It's not tiks. usually the new people that are coming in. Tie parasti nav jaunie, kas ienāk. We need to involve them right away. You see, today, people follow this process in making a decision for God's church. The first and most important step for them is they need to feel like they belong. After that comes the belief. And finally, comes the behavior. Pēc tam nāk uzvedība, ja rīcība, But we try to reverse this. Bet mēs mēģinām apgriezt otrādā. We start to try to work with them on their behavior. Mēs mēģinām tik galā ar viņu uzvedību, ar Stop viņu smoking. Beidz smēķēt. Stop going there. Beidz doties Stop tur. Stop watching that. Beidz skatīties to. Wear something different. Uzvelc mugurā kaut ko Eat citu. something different. Ēd citādi. And we start with the behavior rather than the belonging. And by the way, I, I think there's good biblical support for the process this way. People need to feel like they belong before they're ready to embrace the beliefs and to change their behaviors. I have a few more things that I could share here, but we're closing our time. I create a, a very clear job description for each role in the church. Uh, uh, you created? I create, yes. Mm -hmm. For that local church, what does it mean to be an elder? Es, uh, es izveidoju ļoti konkrētus darba aprakstus katrai... Um, I don't simply uh, give them a few Bible verses to go read and say that's what an elder is. In practical terms, what does an elder do? So I would give a description of what that looked like for the local church I'm at. Un es tātad, kad es biju mācītājs, kad es mācītājs, es iedodu šo te praktisko aprakstu, ko tas nozīmē. In this case, šajā, I'll share a couple of the descriptions for an elder. Šajā gadījumā par draudzes vecāko es iedošu šim dažus aprakstus. We had an elders meeting once a month. Mums bija draudzes vecāko sanāksmi vienreiz mēnesī. That meeting took place in a home setting. Šī te sanāksmi bija mājas apstākļos. For the elders that were willing to host in their homes. Uh, Pie tiem draudz vecākiem, kuri bija gatavi uzņemt savās mājās. The elders mājās. brought their spouses and children with them. Šie draudz vecākie paņēma līdz savus sievas un savus bērnus. We shared a meal together. Mēs kopīgi ēdām. And then we would meet with the elders in a different room if we had some items we needed to cover. Un tad mēs ar draudz vecākiem satikāmies atsevišķā, no, no, nogājām atsevišķā telpā, ja bija kaut kādas lietas. Every elder was expected. Ko, ko izrunāt? 
to do one visit a month. Katram draudz vecākajam, no viņa no viņa tik sagaidīts, ka viņš viņam būs viens apmeklējums mēnesī. At a minimum. Ka minimums. Some did more than that. Dzīt, citi apmeklēja vairāk. But I assigned them one visit a month. Bet es viņiem sarunāju vienu apmeklējumu mēnesī. They were to take someone else with them on that visit. Viņiem vajadzēja kādu paņemt līdzi šajā apmeklējumā. So they were serving as a team. Lai viņi kalpotu kā komanda. Every month when we met with the elders. Katru mēnes, kad es satikos ar draudz vecākajiem. They were given visitation assignments. Viņiem tika doti šo te apmeklējumu uzdevumu. The next month we reported on how those visits went. Nākamajā mēnesī mēs ziņojām, ka viņi ziņoja, kā šī apmeklējuma tika paveikta. These are very simple things. Šīs ir ļoti vienkāršas lietas. But the elders knew what was expected of them as an elder. Bet draudzes vecākie zināja, ko no viņiem sagaida kā draudzes vecākie. And in many of our churches it's simply platform duty to say prayer or to read scripture. Un un daudzās mūsu draudzēs vienkārši kalpošana nozīmē to, ko dara priekšā. And that's all the elder does. Vai, teiksim, and then they attend some meetings. Dara, vienkārši, pielūdz, vai but I believe an elder priekšā. should have some tangible jobs that they do in the church. We divided our deacons into three groups. We had ushers. Mums bija, uh, kas tie ir, jā, jā. The ushers were the ones that pick up the offering. Because we didn't call them deacons, but ushers, women and children also helped to pick up the offering. They were our ushers. Then we had facility deacons. Those were the ones that looked after the facility of the church. And then finally we had ministry deacons. Those were the ones that took care of the foot washing and communion and baptisms and these kind of things. But everybody had a job description to know what they were expected to do. And before they accepted the job they knew what was expected of them. Here's my job description for the elders. Šeit ir mans darba apraksts draudzes vecākajiem. But I want to talk to close here about the qualities of an empowering church. Bet es šeit gribu noslēgumā runāt par īpašībām pilnvarojošajai draudzei. Members are placed in ministry according to passion and giftedness. Draudzes locekļi tiek iesaistīti kalpošanā balstoties uz viņu deksmi un apdāvinātību. You never twist somebody's arm to take a job in the church. We need somebody to do this job. You do a good job. Except. Right? Okay. No. <laughs> we let people serve what they're passionate about. We provide clear job descriptions. Ministry interviews are conducted. What does that mean? What is your name? Marge. Marge, tell me how you've served in, in the church in your previous experiences. So she shares with me. What, what did you find fulfilling about that? If you could serve God any way you wanted, what, what would that look like? How can this church help you be fulfilled in ministry? Kā tu varētu palīdzēt draudzē piepildīt kalpošanas mērķi? Do you see how much different that is than simply calling, hey, Marge, would you be willing to be a deaconess this year? Redzēt, cik tas ir atšķirīgi no tā, kā jautāt. You actually care about the person, not about the position. Vai tu gribētu vienkārši būt diakons? And you might find yourself even starting some new ministries as a result. Un tā rezultātā varbūt pat jaunas kalpošanas rastos draudzē. Mentoring and coaching are happening in the church. Mentorings un coachings notiek draudzē. There's accountability for the, and an expectation that people will do the jobs they've been asked to do. Ir atbildības sajūta cilvēkiem, kad viņiem uztica darbus. Barriers are removed so that people can serve. Barriers tiek noņemts nost, lai cilvēki var kalpot. There's broad base participation. Ļoti plaša piedalīšanās, iestaistīšanās. Collaboration is valued over working alone. Un visbeidzot, sadarbība ir vērtēta darbam vienatnē, pretstatā darbam vienatnē. People are working in teams. 
cilvēki darbojas komandās. Okay. Well, I hope this presentation was helpful. Es ceru, ka šis pali šī prezentācija būs vērtīga. That you have a couple of ideas to take back to your church. Varbūt jums ir pāris idejas, ko aiznest atpakaļ savu draudzi. You can probably do everything, but you can do a couple things. Jūs nevar izdarīt so visu, bet jūs varat darīt. I encourage you before you get up. Lietas. I encourage you before you get up and leave. Es jūs iedošanu pirms jūs piecelties un aiziet or highlight apvilkt vai izcelt a couple things that you're going to go back and try out in your church. Pāris lietas, ko jūs paņemsiet un mēģināsiet izmēģināt savā draudzē. Okay, the next seminar started in about 9 minutes. Nākamais seminārs ir pēc 9 minūtēm.